It's the NFL on EA Sports, and there's no love lost between these AFC North foes. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it comes your way next on Madden Football. But not far from where the Steelers' former homes, the Three Rivers Stadium, Forbes Field once stood, we are at Pittsburgh's Accrashur Stadium. Today, it's an AFC North matchup between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Pittsburgh Steelers. and Gordon, welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me as always, Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. one teed up and with the terrible towels waving wildly we are underway from Pittsburgh oh good looking return set up here and a great return solid field position he's up all the way to the 45 yard line so out come the Steelers now for their first drive they'll be led out by the rookie who played his college ball for the Pitt Panthers and that's Kenny Pickett and when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign, took his game to a new level and made him a first-round pick in the NFL. He's the type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett, he's got some moxie to him. Meanwhile, Pickett's throw complete there to Johnson. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. A first carry for Najee Harris. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Well, I'm quite sure that they envisioned a much better start to this game when they practiced all week, but they failed on that third down play. That brings up fourth down, and they'll probably have to punt it away. They run for it with Harris. A yeah, great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. I got to tell you, I'm shocked. When I realized they were running the football at fourth and that distance, I thought that was a surefire throw. And I can hear it in your voice because I'm the exact same way. No one runs the football in this situation, right? You've got to throw it to have a chance unless you're them. Talk about supreme confidence bordering on arrogance, and they got it done keeping the ball on the ground to pick up the first down. First and ten, here's Pickett. He gets it left side to Johnson. And he's going to get this down near to 25. That early game script that they drew up is working pretty well here on this first drive. Already in field goal range, Charles knocking on the door of the red zone. You know, Brandon, when we met with the coaching staff, they kind of predicted that they would come out firing like this. I think you and I were a little skeptical it would be this easy, but they certainly knew what they were doing in scouting, in preparation, and understanding what their team was capable of. Six yards there on the keeper at second down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. 
He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. Pick it. Open man, that's the tight end fire move. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up the first and goal. That's a big conversion there. Third down, but this is a great opening drive. You know, at this point, they'd hate to settle for three, but they've created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. Harris running straight ahead. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. Najee Harris, well built for work down here near the end zone. That's a nice job there to hold him up, but I doubt we've seen the last of him on this drive. No score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football. As they come up now, second and goal. Again, it's Harris, but he will lose yardage here. Back to the four-yard line. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. A lot of scrimmage at the four. Here's third and goal. Now pick it. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage after this drive, this close to the goal line, Three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. They can't hook up on fourth and goal from the four. And on the opening drive of the ball game, the defense comes up with a goal line stand. The Bengals offense here ready to rock and roll. Joe Burrow is the man at quarterback. Hey, we all love a good story, but what we like even more, guys who can fight through adversity. Joe Burrow coming out of high school, goes to Ohio State, doesn't get a chance to start, transfers to LSU, not thought to be a top prospect, ends up the number one pick in the draft and justifies it. Tremendous play, excellent mobility, and leadership off the charts. I'm wondering. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he powers through the first wave, but he's going to be swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. They were just trying to give their offense a little more room down near their own goal line, but this is just going to make things worse. of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Burrow from his own end zone. To the right side and complete to Hurst. And he will double the space they have to work with as they take it from the two to the four. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. Call it a pickup of three, and also now likely a punt on their opening drive. Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. The Bengals bring out their punter now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. On the return is Olszewski. A big boot that time. 57 yards the official distance. And the Steelers will go on offense here first and 10. 
So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And last time, they had it fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind them, try to put together another drive. A simple tip. And this is caught inside the five. And in for the Steelers' touchdown. Miles Boykin, 59 yards. And the Steelers post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Well, partner, I mean, if anybody was still questioning whether or not he had an NFL caliber arm, I think you can toss that right out the window. That was a heck of a throw right there. I would agree totally. Question it no more. This rookie, big time throw right there. Great poise, stepped up, trusted he could lay it in there perfectly, and he knew that his guy was going to make the catch on the other end. Nice collaboration. Boswell good with the extra point, and it's now a 7 nothing game. Well, now to kick it away after the touchdown. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he's only going to make it to the 13 yard line and no further. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7 0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Gun, gun. Burrow looking to pass over the middle. That's caught by Chase. And he goes down at the 26. A pickup of 13, and that last play began at the 13. First down. He'll drop this. And oh, it caught it up. And it's picked up by the Steelers. Inside the 20. And he takes it back to the house. A fumble recovery for a Steelers score. Even the great ones, some of the best, they're not immune to the fumble, and here it really hurts them. If the ball gets away from any runner's body, that's when the defense pokes at it, swipes at it, swats at it, and finds a way to create a big play for themselves. Extra point put through by Boswell, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. Looking for a bounce back. Had the fumble a moment ago that went for a touchdown the other direction. See if he can get back in rhythm. One, right? And you have to be very careful about having too quick of a hook with really good players. I did a guy's game in high school where he fumbled three times in the first quarter. Finished with over 300 yards on the night. Later ended up in the NFL. If you get a tough to back, give it back to him. On second and ten, Burrow. This goes out wide for Nixon. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there, there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. Oh, they stopped them shy of the marker, thought they were bringing up fourth down, and then that penalty. Let's face it, they thought they had bent, but could absorb that, right? Instead, they broke as a result of their own penalty. Meanwhile, Burrow's throw taken in here by Chase. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Here we go. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. To the air again, Burrow. 
He's got his big tight end. That's Hurst. And he's going to have a first down, and they get into field goal range here at the 29. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half, but I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. I'm one, ready? This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Here's Burrow. Now again, that's Hurst. And he gets it all the way down inside the ten and mark him at the five. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Here we go, here we this go. is first and goal and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Now it's Burrow. Touchdown! Hayden Hurst as the first half is winding down. And the Bengals are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed, and a lot of football full half to be played. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And with a 14-7 lead, they might just be happy to take this thing on into the tunnel. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Final play of the first half. Here's Pickett. He's going to take another shot here. He's got a man complete. And they're going to get this down inside the 15. Pass interference. Defense. So they take a decent shot, CD, and the flag comes out for pass interference. Yeah, a little DPI, as they like to call it in the business, right? And the farther you get downfield, the more frenetic things get, and the more calm and controlled you have to remain as a defender. That's a little bit of a slip there, and the penalty will go against him. So we reach halftime here in the Steel City with the Steelers on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Cincinnati. And they didn't get a whole lot accomplished through the air in those first two quarters of play. They'll need to up their game if they want to rally all the way back. And meanwhile, for the Steelers, we check out their numbers on the ground as they'll try to keep the momentum going into the second half. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The box set to get the football first, and they trail here as we get started in the second half. This will be fielded inside the five. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And the Bengal offense ready to go here to start the third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. And he loses the football a second time. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And they will set up shop with outstanding field position in the red zone at the 17-yard line. 
So it's kind of more of the same offensively. This was a team needing to come out of this third quarter with a little fire. Instead, they put the ball on the ground. And you know that has to be the discussion at halftime because they're down two scores. We've got to come out with a little bit more urgency than we had in the first half. Now that urgency falls on their defense because they can't fall down three scores and hope to come back and win this game. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. They'll try the right side with Harris. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. And a tackle there by Jermaine Pratt. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. And in for the Steelers. Touchdown. Kenny Pickett connecting with Deontay Johnson. And the Steelers take the first fumble and convert it into six points. And that's a drive that makes everyone happy on that bench because they accomplish exactly what they set out to do. Take care of the football, eat up a little clock, end up in the end zone. Now they've got a cushion for the rest of the game. So they didn't just help themselves offensively. They helped their defense out as well. Extra point now by Boswell. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And in the end, it was Deontay Johnson's touchdown catch to cap the drive. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. And oh my goodness, he loses it again. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And they were going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. Man, that's a third fumble for him now in this ball game. And you know the old saying, CD, once is a fluke, twice a coincidence, three times becoming a pattern. Three times is a problem in this case because we've seen field goal kickers have days like this, quarterbacks occasionally. But how rare is it for us to see a running back and now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. On second down, here's Mixon. Call that a gain of five as the clock ticks inside of two minutes to go now in the third. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. And give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional. In the battle of game plans, theirs has been superior. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives them a first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football right now. I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. 
It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do, and that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. Burrow going to give this to Mixon, and he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. On first and ten, Joe Burrow. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. Here we go, here we go. From the 39, Burrow. That's caught over the middle by Hurst. Go. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. The Bengals' passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And all the way down inside the five to the four. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got it first and goal as they look to punch in a late score. And Burrow going to throw again. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incomplete. Open man is Higgins, and he's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Four yards on the touchdown grab, and the Bengals have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead down to 10, 24-14. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this doesn't work. The Steelers recover it. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. Now they are really in the driver's seat here, enjoying this lead late in the fourth quarter. The defense does have all three timeouts, but at this point, doesn't look like it's going to matter much. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Go. 
They hand this off to Harris. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. On the give, this is Harris. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. I can be in that hole with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. Oh, he bowls over it. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. 58 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. I guess he was saving his best for last, so to speak. Longest run of the day coming here in the fourth quarter right there. And that type of run makes for a better night for him and his teammates, doesn't it? To be able to produce this late in the game can lead to some big smiles and satisfaction in the locker room after this one's over. Probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. One final kneel down here as it comes inside the 42nd mark, and that should be enough to put this one on ice. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we talked so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams, right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value. And when they show the film, they have to be careful not to give out too many kudos and kill their motivation going forward. 